and welcome. Whatever led you to pick this podcast today, let me say I'm so glad you're joining me for this very meaningful conversation. As always, I'm Abby. This is Stories Live, Stories Told, and here's what I know. We get to play a part in creating our social worlds in how we communicate. And as our conversation partner today helps us to understand, one of the ways of defining communication is, in her words, as the purposeful action of trying to create shared meaning. So another way of saying that our communication creates our social worlds is to say that when we purposefully act in order to create shared meaning, we impact the world around us. Basically, when we talk about communication, we aren't just talking about talking, but instead we're referring to this much larger process of creating meaning in collaboration with others. That might feel confusing, so don't worry if you don't understand it right away. It might be a totally new way of thinking about communication that's a lot more nuanced than the way that you were taught to think about communication. Today we are joined in conversation by Jennifer Furlong. Among many other things, all of which you can learn more about in the links I'll include in the description, Jennifer is the host of the Communication 24-7 podcast and works as a communication coach and consultant under her company of the same name. I'm going to stop there and let Jennifer tell us more about herself as we jump into this conversation. But first, some questions I would keep in mind as you join us in this conversation are, what is your goal when it comes to communication and how can you be using your communication to pursue connection with others? So with those questions in mind, let's begin. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Hey, Abby. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I've really been looking forward to this. And I'll just go ahead and share that, you know, a lot of the people, I guess I have a mix of people on the podcast. You know, some people very much live in the communication world, like you and me. Some people, you know, work in other fields, but use a communication lens. Other people are not as in depth (laughs) into the communication world as I find myself. I'm feeling that I'm hoping we can just geek out a little bit today on communication. But to get started, I'd love to ask you to introduce yourself. And I ask my guests to introduce themselves because, you know, you know better than I do what stories or, you know, what parts of yourself to share are, you know, the most relevant, Um, Mm -hmm. give people the best context for this conversation, you know, knowing the kind of conversation we're maybe about to have. So with that said, what are some of the significant stories that shaped you? Who is Jennifer? That's always such a big question. I know, I know. Yeah, it, it's like the existential crisis. You know? <laughs> yeah. Whenever, it's like, who am I? Uh-huh. Well, one of my other podcast guests did say it should be amended to who am I right now? Because yeah, it's always right. changing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's, um, you know, the journey though is fascinating, I think for everyone. And that's why that is a fun question to ask because it does force you to think about what are those pivotal moments that mm-hmm. has helped shape you to be who you are today. And for me, being a communication person, this really started when I was really young. You know, I, I've always loved reading. I've always loved writing. Um, you know, in high school, I found myself gravitating more toward wanting to get into the journalism field. Mm -hmm. And so my senior year of high school, I decided, yep, that's what I want to do. I'm going to be a a journalism major. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to the university of Georgia, go dogs, because that's the only (laughs) place I wanted to be. That was the only application I sent in. That's Mm -hmm. how confident I was that I was going to be a Georgia bulldog. Oh yeah. And I got in, I got my acceptance letter. And I was on cloud nine for about 30 seconds and I showed my acceptance letter to my mom and um, she said, well, how are you going to pay for it? And now at this point, I was so completely naive about Mm. the academic world. I did not come from a family who graduated from college. I knew nothing about it. I didn't know anything about financial aid. Mm. You know, I just was a complete blank slate. And I had the impression that if you were going to go to college, it's because your family had money, you know, that that's just how the world worked. And so I was crushed (laughs) because the realization hit me. Oh uh, man, I'm not in any position to go to school. So mm-hmm. what am I going to do? I knew I did not want to stay 
in, uh, in, in my hometown, you know, I, I knew I wanted to do something different. I, I had to get out of there. And so I thought joining the military, that's going to be the next best thing because, Hey, it's going to get me out of there. It'll give me something to do. And, you know, I'll be able to kind of choose what I want to do as long as I could score a high enough score on the ASVAB. So, Mm -hmm. um, so that's really why I joined the Marine Corps was because I felt like it was, um, you know, it was another way for me to kind of get to my end point. Yeah. It was another way for me to reach my goal. And, um, there's, there's stories behind joining the Marine Corps as well that I could probably get into and a sure. little bit later, but, um, while I was in the Marine Corps, I was in public affairs. And so that was my introduction into the journalism world. I was, um, a print journalist for a little while. I did some broadcasting. I did community relations. So, and I was an editor for a newspaper. So I was able to get a well-rounded experience. And so I could decide by the time I got out, yeah, I really do want to stay in this world. I Mm -hmm. loved every single aspect of it. And so when I got out of the military, I used my GI bill and went to school with yeah. that. And so that's how I ended up getting my bachelor's and then eventually got my master's in communication. And, um, you know, 30 years later, I'm still doing this communication thing. Of course, yep. there's been lots of twists and turns because 30 years is a long time, you know, um, 18 of those years I've taught communication courses, um, at the college level, teaching public speaking and human communication, intercultural communication. Absolutely love being in the classroom. I don't love the grading. I absolutely despise <laughs> right. having to grade things. I just want to have the conversation with the students all the yeah, time. I want to yeah. do this stuff in class all the time. That's what I really love about it. Um, but yeah, so 30 years later, I started my own company. Well, it's been about, I, I guess, two years now, you know, mm-hmm. in the middle of the pandemic, I started <laughs> Perfect timing. communication, yeah. communication 24 seven. And, and so I can go into organizations and I help them manage their most difficult communication challenges, you know, with team building. And I help managers learn how to give feedback more effectively. Um, and then as a result of that, I decided to start the communication 24 seven podcast because, Hey, why not? Why (laughs) not? Again, it's in the middle of the pandemic. What else are you going to do? Plus (laughs) I figured it was probably a nice addition to my business just to be able to have something out there Mm -hmm. communication related, you know, and it kind of, uh, reminded me what I loved about journalism to begin with, because I kind of got away from that, you know, for a very long time and, uh, through the trajectory of my career path. And it just, uh, it really ignited that sense of excitement for me again with Mm -hmm. interviewing people and, you know, just having these types of conversations and then just sharing different stories, kind of like what you're doing with the world, oh, yeah. but all communication related. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, why have I not been doing this all along? This is awesome. So, you know, you get the best of all the different worlds with the storytelling and it's my creative outlet. And you're also helping people at the same time and mm-hmm. you know, helping others learn how to develop their own communication skills. Um, so I, I feel like I'm rambling now, but no, it's <laughs> so good. that's it's kind good. of like in a nutshell, 30 years of communication experience. Yeah. And there are pivotal moments along the way, but you know, I, I know I don't want to do information overload and just sure. dump it all at the same time. So I'll wrap up the self intro there. Yep, that's me, Jen Furlong. That's great. That's, that's no, that's, that's a great story. Origin story. <laughs> origin story. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. We heard about how you first came into the world of communication 30 years later. Mm-hmm. What keeps you in the world of communication? I just love doing this, you mm-hmm. know, having the conversations and what really um, gets me really excited about communication is when you have, well, actually there's two things. One thing as as someone who helps others learn to find their voice and how to use their voice more effectively. Mm -hmm. That to me is very fulfilling because when they come back and tell you what a difference that made, 
And it could be something really teeny tiny, something small, or it could be something huge. Um, that to me is very satisfying. I love hearing those stories of, especially when students come back to me and say that there was just this one tiny lesson that we talked about one day and they used it and they found out that it actually worked for them. So that, that gets me really excited. Or if it's a manager who tried, um, a specific framework that I suggested to give feedback and they're like, Hey, that actually worked. It's like, yes, that's exciting. Um, but the second reason I really, stay in communication and what continues to reignite my love for it is being able to lean in and have meaningful conversations about important topics of the day. Um, one thing I did not mention earlier is that I'm a media analyst also. And so as a media analyst, I can't believe I get paid to read the news and then I get to rate it. <laughs> for reliability and bias, right? Mm. You want to know what I think? Okay. And you're going to pay me? Okay. That's awesome. Um, but a part of that job is I have to have conversations with other analysts who come from across the political spectrum. Yeah. So I have to have conversations with people who I don't agree with necessarily yeah. on these hot button issues of the day, but because we're talking about the news, you know, um, we really have to stay focused on the actual text itself and be able to explain and point to concrete evidence within the text yeah. that this is why this skews to the left, or this is why this skews to the right, or this is why this isn't really reliable news. You know, this is more yeah. opinion than anything. And um, that's the stuff that's truly exciting to be able to lean in and engage in those meaningful conversations because I think that's how not only do we learn more about ourselves, but we're expanding our worldview at that point when you can be open enough to listen to different perspectives. And that's really what it's all about right there. And I just find it to be so exciting to do that stuff. This work is incredibly interesting. There's never a yeah. dull day. <laughs> sounds like yeah. it. Sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. That's neat. And I think it's clear that you share the same perspective, you know, when I've listened to your podcast and it's in that first lines, even of your description to saying that I think we take communication for granted as something yeah. that mm -hmm. we'll just like figure out along the way, or we'll just like stumble yeah. into healthy, productive <laughs> communication, but it really is a skill to be developed. And for me, I even hope to go beyond that for people to say, here's some concrete skills, but beyond that, what does mm -hmm. it look like to not only use communication skills, but to take a communication perspective in your mm -hmm. life? Let it be the lens that you see the world through. Let it be, you know, the filter that everything comes through. Cause that's how it is for me, which is, you know, probably one extreme. And it's one of many mm -hmm. frameworks to approach the world with. But I think, like you said, for me, I see it the same way that a lot of the most meaningful conversations I have are ones that are, that challenge me or that are yeah. harder to navigate because it does require mm -hmm. some like communication finesse almost. Yeah. And to me, you know, the language that I use and that comes from the coordinated management of meaning theory is that we're working to create better social worlds with right. our communication. Right. And so in my mm -hmm. eyes, definitely, definitely part of the path to a better social world is learning to have those conversations with people. Right. Learning to lean in, learning the skills that make you able, like you said, to listen, to expand your worldview by getting to participate in those conversations rather than opting out or shutting down or running away. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you have to agree with what that yeah. person says. That's, that's ultimately the thing is, oh, I don't want to listen to what they have to say because I don't agree with it anyway. Well, number one, if you don't listen to what they have to say, how do you know that you don't agree with it? <laughs> right, right. If you're not listening to them, how do you even know what they are saying? You just, you're assuming mm -hmm. that you you think you know what they're going to say. And and so what? If they do say things that you, you disagree with, well, you know what? That's an opportunity for you to reinforce mm -hmm. what you already believe. You know, if you can engage in a conversation with someone yep. and you can reinforce, well, 
you know, I believe in this, this is my value. This is what I believe. These are my likes and dislikes, you know, whatever it is that you're engaged in that conversation, if you can reinforce and explain why you believe the way you believe or how you've come to your conclusion, well, that actually, that just makes it even stronger for you. You create an even stronger Mm -hmm. argument. So I don't understand this hesitation. I know it's not fun to (laughs) talk about difficult topics. You know, I, not everybody gets as excited as I do. when I'm like, Ooh, we get to talk. Let's dig into this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But this is the world we live in. It's messy. We have people who come from all kinds of different backgrounds and belief systems and values and cultures. And, you know, so you got to learn how to sit with with being uncomfortable for a little while. That's, that's how the world works. And if you truly want to impact change and you want others to be able to at least understand your viewpoint, Mm -hmm. you're going to have to learn how to be uncomfortable and then engage in those uncomfortable conversations. You know, otherwise why, why even have any conversations with anybody? I guess if you want to stick in your silo and just listen to people who would, would, parrot, whatever you want to say, say back to you what you want to hear. That's a, that's a pretty boring, miserable existence in my opinion, but Hey, you know, Mm -hmm. you do you boo, that's what you (laughs) want to do, but you're not going to really have any impact, you know, by doing that. Yeah. What you're making me think of is that I had another conversation with some communication people. And we talked about that really kind of the study of communication Mm -hmm. originated the language that was used was it persuasion of yeah. like this study of communication. So it's like, if you yeah. think about communication as persuasion or communication as mm-hmm. a way to persuade, that is how it's been. And so I think I almost want a shift for how we think yeah. about communication of not with a means to persuade, but as a means to understand and to mm-hmm. be understood. And I think that's, it's, that's just what, you know, everything you were just saying makes me think about is that, mm-hmm. like you said, we, a lot of people struggle to be able to even hear what other people who believe differently, who look differently, who live differently have to say. Mm-hmm. We are so far away from persuading, <laughs> you know? It's yeah. like, you have to listen. If you are going to, I don't know, maybe change someone's mind down the road, but that's not the goal. Mm-hmm. You, like we can't even listen. I don't know how we could think we could possibly persuade anybody of anything at this point. Right. But yeah, what is it? what does it change in our communication if the goal is not to persuade or shove, you know, what we believe down other people's throats, but if it's to understand and to be understood. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not to say that you can't have a a point of view that is going, of course, you're going to have a a point of view that's going to be different from others. And look, one of the myths out there is that communication can just fix everything and no, it can't, you know, there are going to be just some things that communication cannot fix, but what it can do is it can help you understand how this is happening or why this is happening. And I'll give you a very personal experience. You know, um, right now I shared with you before we started recording that I'm going through a divorce right now. Um, been together, I've been married for 25 years, been together with my husband for over 27 years. And so my whole life, you know, I have known more of my existence with this man than Mm. without, you know? So it's, yeah, it's kind of a, it's, it's a weird, experience now. And, you know, um, a lot of people will say, well, if you just have better communication skills, you know, you can fix things. And number one, that puts a lot of pressure on an individual. And it does reinforce that misconception that there must have been something that I didn't do. There must mm-hmm. have been something I didn't say. There must have been something wrong with me. And at the end of the day, you know, communication, you and I both know it's this process that you create with others around you. This is, this is, you don't exist in a vacuum. Yep. And so as, as much as we want to improve our communication skills, as much as we have the goal to try to influence and impact you know, the world in a positive way. And we want to be heard and we want to be understood. The fact of the matter is there are others out there that are involved in this communication process. Mm -hmm. And so if, if things break down, I think the 
successful part, and this is something that I've had to, to arrive at my own conclusion. And this is like the meta part of being a communication person, you know, yeah. why I say let's communicate about how we communicate. Yep. I spent a lot of time thinking about this and um, what the communication has helped me realize is that as, as much as I want to be bitter about it, because this is not what I wanted, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I'm turning 50 this year and I don't want to be a single 50 year old, you know, out there. Good Lord. I don't even want to think about that aspect of it, but my whole life has been changed, you know, it's been uh, turned upside down. And the man that I had envisioned, you know, having grandkids over with mm -hmm. and, you know, building this, this life with, you know, going forward. I've had some moments where, you know, you go through this grieving process where yeah. you're, you're angry and then you're sad and then you're bitter. And then, you know, you're resigned to it. But what the communication piece has helped me realize is that I didn't fail. Like my communication wasn't, it wasn't a failure. This was, this isn't something that the communication could just quote fix. Yeah. This was something that the communication has helped me understand. Yeah. He's going through something that he's going through and I can't fix that for him. You know, when you're, when you are uh, a couple, you know, you're in this long-term relationship, you cannot be the therapist for the other person and be their romantic, you know, partner. Um, so it's helped me understand that through my communication, I've had to come to a place of understanding despite the bitterness, despite the sadness and the anger and everything that comes along with it. He's on a journey right now that I can't understand. And I have to try to um, give him, you know, that space that he needs and yeah. yeah, and so that's where I'm coming from. The communication couldn't fix it, but the communication is helping me pivot and change ever so slightly my understanding of the situation. And it's it's helping a little bit. It still hurts. It still sucks, right? Um, but that's just an example of that communication myth that, oh, communication is the key. It'll fix it. And no, sometimes it it just can't be fixed. It has to change. Yeah. You no, know, you got to recognize the change is, is what's happening and, and it needs to happen. For me, I think, yeah, fixed is just not the right word. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what it does for me to have a communication perspective, which feels abstract, feels whatever, but I think is more powerful than we give it credit for is that it does give you that framework to understand mm -hmm. things. Because if you didn't have the perspective, the communication perspective that you do have, you wouldn't be relating to the situation in the same way. And so mm -hmm. to me, you know, using the language that I have, it makes sense that, you know, you've had this story about mm -hmm. how your life was going to look and what yep. it did look like and what path it was going to go on. Mm -hmm. And now you're having to write a new story. Oh, and of yeah. course there's, you know, grieving between like this old story and this new story. And I think for me, I have experienced in, you know, a slightly different way, a lot of examining the stories mm -hmm. that everybody, you know, experiences this. We examine the stories that we've been handed that we're mm -hmm. living in right now. And we have to say, does this work for us? Mm -hmm. Is this the story that I want for myself? Right. And sometimes yes, and sometimes no, and you have to make a new mm -hmm. story. And there is even some grief around mm -hmm. that, even if it's a story that we're choosing to leave behind. Right. The other way that I see your story through the lens of communication is that the way you're making meaning out of the situation mm -hmm. is very mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. in your experience of communication, because you could be, the meaning you could be attaching to the situation is that you have failed in some way that- yeah you know, X, Y, Z went wrong. And oh, if only I'd done this, or if only this had happened or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, fill in the blank with the number of things, but your communication perspective is allowing you to maybe have a healthier understanding of what went down that takes 
blame off of you by recognizing what you can't control. Yeah. And that control is something I think about a lot because when we say, you know, our communication creates our social worlds and we get to choose our communication, you know, that we do have a lot of personal power to choose Mm -hmm. how we show up, to choose how we communicate with others, to choose how we are in relationship with people. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's so many things that are outside of our control. And so it's like, how do we find a balance between controlling the things we can, letting go Mm -hmm. of the things we can't and doing that in a healthy way that is productive for us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a big difference between reacting to something Mm. and responding to something. What does that mean to you? How do you make that distinction? Yeah. You know, reaction is, and, and I had some reactions now, of course. You know, like, what, <laughs> like, trust me, you know, so anybody who's listening to this, please don't ever feel like, oh, well, I got to get it perfect in this healthy yep. communication. And she sounds like she kind of has it together. Trust me. I no, no, that's not <laughs> how this went down. You know, this is something and, and you know, it from being in communication, it's, it evolves and we get we do get better at it, but it's something that, you know, I fall short all the time. And especially when it's something that is so emotional, you know, if you are emotionally connected to whatever it is, it doesn't matter if we're talking about politics, we're talking about our personal relationships, you know, it's a family member, um, anything that we have this emotional connection to, we're going to feel a certain type of way (laughs) about things, you know, as they unfold. And that's where the reaction comes to. If you don't take a second to like think and you let that emotional part of the brain take over and then that's when we react to things and that's when we say things that we may not necessarily mean or Mm -hmm. sometimes we might blurt something out. And at that moment in time, yeah, we 100% met that thing that was so awful that we just said because we were feeling that way. But that's the reaction part Mm -hmm. of it. But if you take a moment and you just take a deep breath and you you just kind of think about this moment right here and what does it mean and recognize how is it making me feel recognizing that whatever the other person just said to you recognizing like what are they feeling right now mm-hmm. what are their emotions because their emotions are having an impact on what they are saying to you right now so the whole reaction versus responding thing it it's all just a matter of time you know, letting it pause for just a moment and recognizing those critical things within the moment, my emotions, your emotions, you know, what does this truly mean for this moment? And then what do I want to say? What do I want to do to have the impact that I'm intending to have in this moment, you know, moving forward. And that is not something that comes easy and we fail at it every single day, but if we can just try to work on that part of it, we get better at it over time. And, you know, this is something that I've just for this one experience right now, going through this divorce, I've been actively trying to work on this. I mean, even just last night, I, I sat down and wrote in my journal because I was so upset. Mm. I took my wedding ring off for the first time mm. since all of this happened. Yeah. And you talk about communication and symbols, right? Yeah. Talk about meaning. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, it was like ripping my heart out of my chest all over again. So I put my ring in the uh, jewelry box and I shut it and I put it in the drawer and I took this deep breath and I just let it out. Yeah. I just, I cried and, you know, just let the tears flow. And I was, then I could feel myself getting angry. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I need to sit down. And so I opened up my journal and I just started writing down everything I was feeling. And then I made a conscious choice. I said, okay, I got everything out, all the negatives. Let me write down some positive things because what I was writing down were all of these firsts that I've experienced over the past couple of months that mm-hmm. have just been, they haven't been good first. Right. And I was like, you know what? Write down some, some of the good first. And even if it's just one or two, think about it. And so I started writing down a couple of the things that I've experienced for the first time 
since, you know, this, this whole thing started happening and I could feel myself calming down. Mm. I could feel my logical side of the brain beginning to work again. Yeah. And instead of reacting, you know, like I was, I, I began responding. And so then I felt more in control then, and I could really think about, all right, this is how I can move forward from this. I'm going to choose to focus on some of the good firsts that Mm -hmm. have happened and, and will happen and could possibly happen for me, you know, uh, reaction for versus response. That's a huge thing right there to be able to try to implement when we have these really heavy things that are going on in our lives. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. reaction versus response is important. And, you know, you talked about yeah, in your own reflecting on things. And I think in, even in conversation with others that, you know, you're not talking figuratively when you say, take mm-hmm. a pause, take a breath, like mm-hmm. that might feel awkward for people in real conversation, mm-hmm. but I do that. Like it works. It does mm-hmm. make a huge difference. Really so if does. you can move past that mm-hmm. initial, like awkward feeling of like, mm-hmm. well, I, you know, can I say, yeah. can we take a breather right yeah. now? Like, give me one second to think like yeah. that it does actually make a huge difference if people mm-hmm. let themselves have that moment. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to react to everything. You don't have to, mm-hmm. I mean, you absolutely, it is, it is perfectly within your, within your control to recognize I'm feeling a certain kind of way about this. And okay. So I need to hit the pause button. I hit the pause yeah. button and, and tell that person I need a moment. I need a moment. And it could be that you just need a minute, five minutes, or maybe it's because of the time of day and it's one o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and you're, you're going at it like a couple of crazy animals, you know, and it's just, you can't think straight. And yeah, it, it's actually preferable that you say, look, I rec it's late. We are tired. We're not, mm-hmm. this isn't productive. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's table this for the morning. Let's this is important enough. We need to talk about this and we need to, you know, come to an understanding. And so let's in the morning, let's agree. We're going to get up, have some breakfast and let's talk about this. Let's continue this conversation. Let's dedicate ourselves to this. That does so much more toward being able to arrive at something that both of you are going to be able to be in a better place as a result of that, that rather than just forcing yourself to constantly react to everything. Oh, he said that I got to say this, or she said that I got to say this, you know, Mm -hmm. and you, you don't always have to react to things. It, It can have a better outcome if you choose to disengage sometimes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like you were saying, the point is the goal is not to have perfect communication. It yeah. is to mm-hmm. be able to have the skills, the language, the tools to look at your imperfect mm-hmm. communication. Right. And, you know, be working towards better communication. But if you mm-hmm. recognize that the goal is not perfect communication all the time, but to be able to, you know, look back at yourself, that mm-hmm. that's what that, you know, communicating about how we're communicating is about, yeah. which in my mind yeah. is, you know, very expansive because it's not just mm-hmm. let's talk about how we communicate. Let's mm-hmm. think about how we communicate. Let's mm-hmm. try to express that in words. Let's, you know, yeah. a million what other learn things. from it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's what lessons mm-hmm. can we take from our communication? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious about your perspective on this. I, you know, where I feel like I exist with this podcast is that I kind of feel like I have one foot on the like theory academic side of things and one foot in like, I don't know, outside of that. Um, right. Yeah. Real, real life. Um, yeah. And I want to just translate for people. I want to bring all this good that mm-hmm. I got to like study in school that like felt so empowering for me that, you know, mm-hmm. gave me the perspective that I have on life now because I'm like this, this really does change things Yeah. for people. Mm-hmm. And so everybody deserves to have access to this knowledge to have better relationships. And so I think, how can I do that? How can I make it more accessible for people? And part of it is, you know, the language that's used, especially, Mm -hmm. you know, the CMM theory is like a very complex theory and it has to be life communication is complex. Right. But there's been like criticism around it because the language feels inaccessible Mm -hmm. to people. Yeah. And so I think even on a very basic level, I struggle to come up with a different way to say communication shapes our social worlds like I'm almost like what do I mean when I say communication because in my experiences I kind of have 
a whole list of things that I mean when I say communication. I struggle to put that into words. And so I wonder from your perspective, like what is communication? How do you define it? Yeah, I define it as your active attempt to try to create shared meaning with Mm. others. If I can really think about the situation and who I'm talking to, whether it's just one person or it's an audience of a thousand, you know, it is that purposeful action of trying to create a meaning that they're going to get it in the way that I hope Mm -hmm. they will get it. And so that takes, that takes time. It takes intention. It takes specificity in language. You know, it takes clarity and it, it takes a willingness to be able to think about how is it that they might, how might this come across? Mm. You know, how can I say this in a way that number one, they're going to be more apt to be accepting of it because it's, this is going to be a difficult conversation that we, we have. How do I create that sense of this is a conversation? It's going to be uncomfortable, but I think it's going to be better for both of us in the long run. You know, so it's the intentionality part. And that's what Mm -hmm. my definition of communication is. It's just my, the the purposeful action of trying to create shared meaning. Right. I think if at the very least, you know, what I hope people get is that when I say communication, I'm not just talking about words. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're every, everything we do communicates Mm -hmm. something. Oh yeah. 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 (laughs) You are communicating with your body. You are communicating with your words. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you are communicating with your body language. You you know, the way that you spend your time communicates something. The way you spend your money communicates something. You know, the, the people you surround yourself with communicate something. So I almost want to say like, you know, if I was going to choose different words for your kind of tagline of let's communicate about how we communicate, mm-hmm. my like alternatives in my head would be like, let's think, learn and talk about how we live. Like almost when I say communication, I'm talking about like living life. Because yeah. <laughs> it, it is in every is. every yeah. moment of our life. And I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe that's too broad of a stroke for some people. <laughs> um, like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about there. You lost me. But it, it shows up in every area of our life, at least. There's a lot more to living life, of course. But yeah, it's just to live is to communicate, right? Yeah, yeah. It's that's a very philosophical it. thing. It is. It's a very yeah, philosophical yeah. thing. And the thing is, is like, how do I want to live my life? And that is going to impact how I communicate with others. And there are some people out there, they could give less of a crap about connecting with someone else, right? They yeah. could care less if they have that meaningful interaction. Really, at the end of the day, all they want is to tell people what to do and for people to do what they say and, yeah. you know, and to control the situation or to pontificate, you know, and have everyone agree with them. And, yep. you know, there, unfortunately, there are going to be individuals out there that we will come across. And that's just, that's how they live their life. But now we have a choice mm-hmm. again you know, reacting versus responding, you know, you do have, and this is one of those philosophical things. Again, you do have the right to disinvite people from your table. You do have the Mm. right to invite who you want to your table and disinvite people who you don't want from your table. You run across people who no matter how hard you try to reach out and engage in a meaningful conversation, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm with, with that particular person. And so that, I think that's a hard lesson to learn as well. You know, as a communicator, we hope that, oh, if we just communicate better, can I just be more effective? Sometimes it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And you've got a decision to make now. Are you going to keep beating your head up against that brick wall (laughs) or are you going to change directions Mm -hmm. and make a different use of your time? Yeah. Why, why did you choose the tagline of communicate about how we communicate for your work for your podcast? When I talk to so many people about communication skills and they'll immediately say, oh yeah, I want to be a better communicator. And I'll ask them why. And nine times out of 10, the reason they want to be a better communicator is because they want to be able to influence others, right? In some way, they want to be able to persuade. At the end of the day, let's be real. You just want to be able to say what you want to say (laughs) and just have everybody else agree with you. Like that's really- That's what you mean. Yeah, that's, that's really, let's be real here. And that's not how- 
the real world works. And so let's communicate about how we communicate. I want you to focus on peeling back the layers, have the courage to peel mm-hmm. back the layers, look inside yourself and really learn about why do I communicate the way I communicate? What are my strengths? Because I mm. might have some ways of communicating that work incredibly well. And then I might have some ways of communicating that are unfortunately causing friction points in my life that if I were to address it, my life might be a little smoother, you know, it might operate a little better, you know? And so, yeah, peel back those layers. Let's communicate about how we communicate so we can pinpoint the the strengths that we have. And then we Mm -hmm. can pinpoint some of those areas that we might be able to work on so that we can have a more meaningful impact. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you can manipulate others in a more effective way or that you can persuade, but to be able to connect with others and to be able to understand. I tell my clients, um, I say, you know, look, you've got to focus on yourself and your own communication skills. Quit thinking about everybody else and how you wish they would be, how you wish they would act, how you wish the words that they would say. One of my biggest pet peeves is policing other people's language. Mm-hmm. That's my, you know, it's, if you spend your life trying to get everyone else to change how they communicate, you are going to be a miserable SOB for the rest of your life because it ain't going to you know, you can't control other people and how they act, how they behave and what they mm-hmm. say and the things they do, but you can look inside and control the things that you say and how you behave and the things that you do in this life and how you connect with others. That does not mean you have to acquiesce. That does not mean you have to always accommodate, you know, mm-hmm. other people. You definitely have to have your own point of view and you should have the courage to stand up for your point of view. But what I'm saying is just when there is an issue, have the courage to peel back those layers and look at, maybe there is something, if I could rewind the clock, (laughs) if I could turn Mm. back time, I could have handled that a little more effectively, you know, Mm. and, and just have the humility to recognize that we're imperfect and we will be wrong on certain occasions. And so we gotta be able to learn from that. That's what communicating about how we communicate is all about. Okay, this is where we will end part one of our conversation with Jennifer. Come back on Monday for part two and the following Monday for part three which is going to be a very special episode where Jennifer and I are able to model a curious conversation where the goal is to understand and be understood. In the meantime, keep playing around with the ideas that Jennifer talked about today. I wonder if you see any of your own story in hers. If you have questions, ideas, or stories, please reach out on Instagram, YouTube, or on the website and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. As always, I get to do this podcast with support from the CMM Institute for Personal and Social Evolution. I'll provide a link to their website where you can learn more about them and all of their initiatives. Also, the music for this podcast is created and generously shared by one of the stewards, Rick Spann, who is also a former conversation partner of the podcast. Huge thank you to him for helping me to set the tone and add layers of meaning to this podcast through music. Finally, let's end with some next turns. Please follow the show wherever you listen, leave a review and a rating, and share this episode with someone you want to invite into our ongoing conversation. And as I mentioned, connect with me on Instagram. You can do that at Stories Live Stories Told Pod, on YouTube at Stories Live Stories Told, or on the website storieslivestoriestold.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to do one or all of these. And thank you for showing up. Thank you for being curious. And thank you for being a part of this story. Until next time. I'm Abby, and this has been Stories Lived, Stories Told. 